turn your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save the servant who trusts in you, my God. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. My brothers and sisters, we prepare ourselves to hear of Christ's call to us to follow him, by offering firstly to our loving Saviour those moments of weakness in our lives. Lord Jesus, who came to call sinners, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, who came to gather all into your kingdom, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So let's pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So it's Thursday evening, folks. It's time for us to have our weekly dabble in the uh, in the gospel that we'll hear on Sunday. Um, we use uh, today's uh, this evening in the Eucharist in the Mass. We use it at the moment to kind of almost uh, begin our offering to God of uh, of our collective praise on Sunday, and uh, that's why we study today's gospel. We don't do Thursdays; we do Sundays. That's why we use it today. Well, it is there in your sheet, if you have your sheet, or if you've taken it off the front of the uh, uh, the website on the website. Um, uh, Matthew 16, verses 21 to 27. If you want to look at it in your pew Bible, there it is. The ones you hope, if you've got a copy of this particular one, um, it's a Bartholomew's. We encourage most people to buy two, one for the pew and one for home. Uh, it's page 798. I'll better point out the ones that are not in the pews at the moment. There we go. Just in case you say, where are they? All tucked away safely, put away safely for the moment. Anyway, page under, page 798. Uh, and we use our uh, um, our usual uh, formula. He says, scrabbling, scrabbling around to find it. Well, I know it off by heart. Uh, who, where, when, um, what, why, and wherefore. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's all the W's. Um, who's in it, where is it happening, when is it taking place in the gospel story, what is happening verse by verse, why is the gospel writer included in this passage, and wherefore, what's it got to do with us? And they've been doing this for 18 years, I think, 19 years now, so um, it's, uh, it's a tried and tested formula, we use it all around the world, so uh, no excuses, <laughs> to me that is. All right. So let's read through it and see what the passage is for this week. Okay. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo go great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind on, on, on not on divine things, but on human things. And Jesus told his disciples, If anyone wants to become followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will it they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come, with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then they will repay everyone for what has been done. Mm. Okay. First question: How did you feel about that? Always well, good one. Emotional response to the to the gospel reading, the Bible passage. None of us are experts. We we feel it and interpret the gospel in our own way. Did you like that? Mm. Oh. I'll be honest. Not sure. Not sure. 
Oh, let's find out, shall we? Let's pick it apart and find out. Okay, so what have we got? Who is in it? Well, we've got the first person we got in verse 21 there is Jesus. There he is, Joshua, the blessed one, the Messiah. There we go, son of God, uh, son of man, um, the Christ. I'll go on and on and on, can't we? Um, but Jesus, there we go. Um, what have we got? Then we've got, uh, moving on a little bit, uh, we've got to show his disciples. Disciples, remember what disciples are? Yes, I heard you shout that out. Followers. You, if you decide to follow Jesus, are a disciple. There we go. Um, there we go, disciples. They're the ones that have picked up, and it's throughout the ages, it's those who have decided to give him a go. Give him a go. Right, what else have we got? Uh, got the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes. <gasps> oh, the governing classes. More than that, the religious classes. And remember, remember that uh, Israel at this time is a fundamental religious state i suppose that's the closest way of describing it and um, the romans don't have to do much because they let the jewish authorities go and do it for them it's a tough time and some of the some of the script the um, um uh, laws and the punishments um are meted out through the scriptures stoning to death and so forth and stuff is uh, is administered through the religion through the chief priest. So when you hear of the elders, chief priests, scribes, um, not talking bishops, priests and deacons and nice people from the diocese, talking people that have real power over your life. They're like priests, bishops, deacons, combined with judges, combined with politicians, combined with militia leaders. T tough. Oh. But they, of course, represent here, of course, they represent the faith but the reason jesus digs into because they have not really stayed like the bishops priests and deacons should be they have become this distorted distorted version vision of of god's future for mankind so but who else have we got um peter there he is in verse 22 peter the rock petros there he is um, the one we heard last week. Um, it's going to build the church's shoulders. Yeah, um, but no, the one, the one who is certainly singled out clearly. Um, not Andrew, the older one, but uh, uh, Peter is certainly singled out as the apostolic foundation. As well, you know, he's he's the one around which the action of the, apost the the apostles takes place. I think that's the one where equal, but he's certainly the one at the heart of the pre-passion, resurrection, and post-resurrection life of the church. And now, so, that's Peter. Uh, what are we, how else have we got? Ooh, whoa, whoa. verse 23, Satan, <gasps> the devil, the red mask, the red horned one. Well, Satan is the picture of all that is wrong. Um, it's a personification of turning away from God are turning against God. Um, if you turn to evil ways, you're turning against God because God is God is short for good. God is goodness and God is love. And so the personification of that is uh, what we call the devil, Satan. Um, very handy. It's a good way of understanding it. Otherwise, it's just a little too abstract for us, really, to be honest. Um, the whole idea of how do you describe sin, how do you describe it, I don't know. But Satan... Uh, but the personification is quite handy, isn't it? Because it can trip you up, lead you astray, just like somebody can do to you or you can do to someone else. There we are. Right, OK, move on. Uh, uh, verse 24, disciples again. He says followers. It comes on there. Um, a bit of uh, nondescript who are they? Verse 27, son of man. That's the one that gets me time after time after time. What a description he gives himself, uh, Jesus does. The Son of Man. It's that placing beneath mankind, isn't it? Um, well, there is the first, well, one way of looking at it is the first Adam, man. Adam means man, the first man. And then the Son of Man. This is the new creation, you could say. Uh, the second Adam is another way of putting at it. But also it is that very subservient thing, isn't it? We should still be where we are. But we're not. Okay, whoa. 
Well, angels. We've got angels in verse 27. Angles, there we are. Remember, angels are not dead people sitting on clouds playing harps. They are God's creation. They are his messengers. They can sometimes look like us. Well, that's the bit we recognise. We have no idea until that time comes, maybe, when you get to meet one. But definitely, um, they're God's creation. They're not of this world. They are of the world through to God. Again, I'd love to answer. Just trust me. <laughs> it's a mystery. There we are. the answer. It's a mystery. Right, okay. All that. Where is it happening? Well, we'll have to have a little look. Um, well, the other week we were up in Galilee, weren't we? Up in Caesarea Philippi. Um, I presume we have no geographical reference other than he's still travelling around. So let's take a good punt here. It's up north. There we are. Still up in Galilee, maybe. Good guess. Right. When is it taking place? Right. Always important because the Gospels have a have a have a pattern from the uh, somehow there's a narr narrative that uh, brings Christ into the world. Say that not a birth in every one. Mark there isn't. And then there's the the journey up to the turn to Jerusalem, and then there's the journey from uh, to Jerusalem, passion, passion and death, resurrection in some, not others. So in Matthew's Gospel. We are, of course, we know we're in that uh, that first part. We're probably almost towards the end of the first part. I think we are. Um, we're almost towards the end of that first part as we before we make that 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 turn to Jerusalem. Okay, right. So what's happening verse by verse? From that time on, that's after what we heard last time when he said, "Peter, you are the uh, uh, the rock, uh, and uh, build my church." And then he says, Shh, "Be quiet." So from that time onwards, last week, Jesus began to show his disciples, show his disciples. We are definitely in that transition as to, to, to go towards Jerusalem. He's preparing them that he must go up to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders, chief priests and scribes and be killed. I'm reading this now. Um, so we are now beginning to prepare for what will happen eventually. We're just turning the cusp. Um, it's an extraordinary moment, isn't it? Um, you would have thought, would you not? Being prepared for all of this, that come the night of Monday Thursday in the Garden of Gethsemane, none of them would have run, but they did. Um, even Peter collapsed in, you know, packed up in the end. There's that whole thing about, you know, our human frailty. Jesus does something extraordinary. People have done it. I'm not, I'm, you know, Maximilian Colby, there's one for you. You know, people have done extraordinary things, placed in their lives for others. And Jesus does it as well, though. But there's, there's a whole thing that Jesus knows is going to face something really quite bad. Um, rather than being put into a situation where he loses his life, he's part of it, the situation. He's almost the creation of the situation. That's a real. That's a real one. So he's got to prepare the disciples because at any point he can turn around and walk away. Remember? He can do all kinds of stuff. But he doesn't. So it, so we now know that what's going to happen, that there will be great suffering at the hands of the elders, chief priests and scribes. I mean, that whole thing about rejection from his own people. You know, These are the inheritors of Moses' uh, faith, Abraham's faith, and they turn against him. God, him. So it gets him. So, um, and on the third day be raised. Curious that one. I do wonder sometimes. And you do, and can't answer it again. Remember that these are all written in retrospect. All the Gospels are written in retrospect. They're, they're written years after the events. 20, um, 30, 40 years after the events uh, in this case. And so, no doubt, as Matt, uh, the writer of this Gospel is putting this together, he knows what's happened. And so you can clearly see that Jesus was preparing them. So he's not putting words into Jesus' mouth and just trying to make it up. He can see. And the apostle said, we can now see that he was preparing us for when this would happen and when he would rise again. So um, remember, it's all written in retrospect. Uh, it's an odd quirk of the Gospels. <laughs> like writing something after the event about the event's 
progress, you can't help but to have that flavour of knowing what will happen. So, and Peter took him aside, okay, after all this stuff, and said, um, God forbid it, Lord, this may never happen to you. Well, remember, this is almost like Peter's preparation for in the courtyard at uh, Pyrefas on uh, the night of morning Thursday, or the morning Good Friday, isn't it? So, um, he said to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, this minute, I'm not, I, I'm going to stop this happening, boss. No way, there's no one getting near you. I'm hard as nails, I'm a fisherman, built like an outhouse, quite handy with a sword if necessary. Don't worry, this ain't going to happen. But of course, what is that? We now, on this begin to turn to Jerusalem, we begin to find out what is going to happen there. This isn't simply somebody, Jesus, just going up and saying, crucify me, job done. I've come and done what the scripture said. No, now we're finding out why that happens. Because Jesus is going to Jerusalem to do a battle. He's going to fight something. He's going to overcome something. Here it comes. But he turned, Jesus turned, said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me for you are setting your mind on and defying things and human things. Get behind me, Satan. Now we're getting the clues. We're getting the first clues about why he's going to go to Jerusalem. He's not going there just to be a great hero and say, look at me, I died for the cause, now follow me. He's actually going to go and die for something different. He's going to die for a bigger and deeper cause than not anyone has ever done. This cause is going to actually do something which wipes away our sin. Whoa. And that's the thing that separates us from heaven. That's the thing that separates us. Up to this point, there hasn't been, okay, apart from Ezekiel, Ezekiel maybe, maybe apart from Moses, as we found out the other day, um, and um, oh, what's his name? Um, <laughs> oh, Enoch. You know, they've gone straight to heaven. Their sin has been cast away. Who knows about, you know? Um, but for mankind, there has to be that this mechanism has to be put in place that is going to cast away our sin and draw us into paradise. Wow, Eden. That's why. So we're now learning a bit why Jesus did it. But then behind us, Satan. Satan, evil, is trying to pull him back. Of course, Satan, you know, that, that idea that sin. Is what is is what's going to try and separate us from God? And who's the worst at sinning? Well, who can sin? Uh, your dog might look guilty when it's nicked something off the table, but that's our perception of the dog looking guilty. Uh, a dog probably just hopes you can be able to get back back again. But <laughs> oh, big debate of dogs now starts up. I'm in the real living room, so I can see that one. Um, do dogs have souls? No. Oh, right. That's slammed on the internet now. There we are. <laughs> um, be everywhere by the end of tomorrow. No. What we're talking about here is we're talking about the thing that separates us, of course, is sin. And the, the, the uh, effectiveness of sin is through us. You can reject sin. It's gone. You can, you can do it and let it happen. You've separated yourself from God. And the Satan, this, this idea that Satan is this, it's almost like there's a little bit in all of us, you know. We've all got it and we all fight with it. The devil within, we all fight with it. And he sees it in Peter. Here we are, Peter, in behalf of all of us, is the one that's kind of trying to block it, really. Who wouldn't, in a way? But uh, you are a stumbling block to me, says Jesus. We are setting your mind not not divine things but human things. You mustn't stop this. This is something from above. Divine things, God things. Matthew is very You don't get that much of a mention divine in Matthew's gospel. That's John's gospel. Okay, verse twenty-four. Oh, still going, but are we up? Then Jesus told his disciples, "If you want to be followers, uh, uh, want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me." Ah. Curious, isn't it? Because yet we've not actually heard about the cross. Um, uh, <coughs> did he say this? Probably, maybe. Extraordinary prediction, but of course he knows where he's going. He knows what's going to happen. 
but the, certainly the imagery is there, isn't it? Picking up your cross, horrid, difficult. The cross is the sign of judgment, isn't it? Normally, if you're going across it, because you've been judged. Remember, Pilate judged him. Crucify. So if anyone wants to become my followers and deny themselves, take up the cross of me. Now again, do remember that retrospect of the Gospels, written after persecution. There has already been a persecution of the Christians in Jerusalem, and many have died, including some of the apostles. You know, this is certainly at this time is a mark of Christianity that there can often be the pain and persecution and martyrdom more commonly. We have it in our own lives in different ways and sometimes unfortunately in the same way in, in, in parts of our world. Um, so, but deny themselves, let go, that's a bit of that loosing thing in the last one. Deny yourself, put away that selfishness, put away that I want to keep Jesus to myself routine. Put away, you know, there's me and my God and nothing else matters. Put away those things which, you know, as I said, I say, I've got a bigger car than next door. I am complete. You know, those things. Put them away. Deny those. Deny those things which can come out of you. Say no to them and follow me. Take up your cross. Be prepared for the journey and follow me. For those who want to save their life will... Ah, here we go. Those who want to save their life will lose it and those who lose their life, for my sake, will find it. Well, you can say, I am complete. I am fabulous. I've done it. Um, I'm absolutely brilliant. I, 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 I in trouble unfortunately in the words of Frank Sinatra I did it my way do not apply to God's plan of of uh, restoration of sin um, <laughs> verse 3 and I listened to the man in black and uh, on any of I turned my back you know I mean so you've got to be careful with that one so it's my way we all do it God's way is the better way God's way gets you to heaven not Frank Sinatra's, my way. Right, and those who lose their life, let God use you. Who knows? The journey is there. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world forfeit their life? A Ferrari in the driveway doesn't get you to heaven. <laughs> what will they give in return for their life? Will they sell the Ferrari and uh, give the money to the poor? Woo! Choices and choices. You have the choice. That's what it's all about. For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. Here we go. That's the end of time, isn't it? And then he'll repay everyone for what they've done. So, how do you get to heaven then? So, why is the Gospel right to include in this passage? We've now turned to on the way to Jerusalem. We're beginning to work towards it. We're trying to understand why Jesus is going to die and therefore how the resurrection um, uh, comes about. Well, so what is going on there? How is it going to happen? Well, uh, wherefore, what's it got to do with us? The choice is yours. I'm sorry, to be blunt, sometimes being a priest can be quite easy. <laughs> the choice is yours. You can go for it or not. If you go for it, well, according to the passage here, it's not bad. If not, well... You'll have to sort that out with him when the time comes. Me and other clergy and the rest of us will try and help you, try and steer you, suggest, cajole, push, shove, make it obvious and attractive. Well, taking up crosses isn't, but you know what I mean? To take the right decision. But ultimately, it's up to you. And that is a great gift. You're not an automaton. You're a free person. Make the right choice. Peace be with you. And also with you. Bless to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands and made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness of this wine to offer fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, for the good of all his church. O Lord, who gain for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow gracious, graciously on us, we pray, the gift of unity and peace in your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Jonathan Robert Nick, our bishops, your clergy and all your people whom you call to your service. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Bartholomew, Mark, and Mary of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, says the Lord, and I will raise them up on the last day.
So let's pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that all things we may please you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. May Christ grant you holiness to follow him in faith, hope, and love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.